the next part body that I am going to work on is the axle. For this, I am going to draw a sketch of the axle's profile and then apply mirror and shaft commands. To do this, let's first add a new part and rename it as axle in its properties window. For this part, I am going to open the part body in a new window and then build it further. To do this, I will right click on the axle part, the icon with one yellow gear and then go to axle object and then select open in new window option. If you look at the icon for the product, there are two gears indicating that it is an assembly. Part bodies are generally shown with a single gear icon. I will start a new sketch on the YZ plane. I will use the profile command to draw these lines as shown in the picture below. I will use offset to copy these lines and then use the mirror command along the H direction axis. The sketch is now complete. I will apply the shaft command to create a circular profile on this sketch. The axle design is now complete. Let's switch back to assembly workbench and see what's happening there. Voila! The axle is automatically updated in the assembly as well. All these features are visible in the specification tree under the axle part body. You can see the axle overlapping with the top plate. Let's use the manipulation tool to move the axle away from the top plate. Similar to the axle, the bushing is also done by creating a revolved feature of a sketch. Let's insert a new part and rename it as bushing. Now, I will open this part in a new window. I will drag the sketch on the YZ plane using the profile command as per the picture below. I will now use the shaft command to make this sketch a solid model. If we look back in the assembly workbench, the bushing appears. I will first double click on the caster wheel on top of the specification tree to activate it. Now let's use the 3D compass to move the overlapping bushing away from the top plate. Now we are ready to create the next part in this assembly. The final part that we need to design is the wheel. I will draw this I-shaped profile and then apply shaft and edge fillet commands to complete the model. To do this, let's insert a new part and rename this part as wheel in its properties window.
Let's open this part in a new window and start a sketch on its YZ plane. I will use the profile command to draw the sketch as shown in the picture below. Observe how I am giving dimensions for each line while drawing them. One side of the sketch is complete. Now I will use the mirror command to copy the sketch onto the other side of the V-direction axis. I will now apply the shaft command to add thickness to this sketch. Let me also apply a 5mm radius edge fillet command to make these edges smoother. The wheel design is now complete. Let's now look back in the assembly workbench. Here, I shall use the 3D compass to move the wheel away from the center. Before we start assembling the components, I will insert another instance of axle support and bushing into the assembly. Now, I will move the components apart from each other. You may use 3D compass to do this or the manipulation feature. The first axle support that was designed in this assembly moves from its position even though it was built in the context of the top plate. That is because it is not constrained with assembly mates yet. In this step, we shall apply all the mates required to constrain the movement of the part bodies. We shall also create an exploded view to display in the drawing. First constraint that I am going to apply is the fixed constraint to the top plate. So, I will select the fixed component command from the constraints toolbar and then select any face of the top plate in the graphics area. You may also select top plate from the specification tree. Next, I will apply the coincidence constraint between the axis of each hole in the corner of the top plate and those of the two axle supports as shown. Now let's apply contact constraints between the top plate and bottom sides of both the axle supports as shown. I will click on update to see the constraints being applied. Moving on, I will apply a coincident constraint between the axis of the axle 
and the axis of one of the axle supports. Next, let's apply the offset constraint between the inner surface of the axle support and the surface of the axle as shown. I will give the offset value as 8 mm. Let's apply the same coincidence and offset constraints between the wheel and the axle supports. I am giving an offset distance of 9 mm. Let's hide the wheel from the graphics area until we constrain the bushings. I will apply the coincidence constraint between the axis of the bushings with that of the axle. Next, I will apply the contact constraint between the bottom surface of the bushings with the face of the axle on either side as shown. Let's show the wheel back in the graphics area. Moving on, I will hide all the constraints, the planes and the offset values seen in the graphics area. I will click on the Generate Numbering command in the Product Structure Tools toolbar to be able to generate balloons in the drawing. Next, I will click on the Enhanced Scene from the Scenes toolbar. In the Enhanced Scene Definition window, we may give a name to the scene. So, let's first uncheck the Automatic Naming checkbox and name this scene as Exploded View. I will click on OK to exit this window. Now, I will select the Explode option in the Enhanced Scene sub toolbar. For the Fixed Product option, I will select the top plate from the graphics area and then click on the OK button. We can see that Katia had scattered all the parts of the caster wheel assembly for us. I can click on the Exit Scene command here to go back to the assembly workbench. Let me save the work we have done so far. In the file menu, we can see a feature called Save Management. Let's take a look at it. Save Management helps save all the files that are opened in Katia without switching between the documents. This comes in handy when you are working with large complex assemblies. This feature allows us to save only the new and modified files instead of restoring all the opened files. For example, I will expand the specification tree under the wheel model and modify the model like so. Now, if I go to the file menu and then the save management, we are now able to save just the wheel document. Also, if I click on Save As, I am able to save a newer version of the wheel and the assembly in a different folder location.
Propagate Directory option serves to save the complete assembly to this new location. I will click on OK here. All the assembly files along with the modified version of the wheel and the assembly are saved in this location. Any further changes will be saved to this product. While we are here, let me also tell you about a feature called Document Properties under the File menu. This option displays the file name, path to where this file is saved, file size, software version, release number and build date of the code used to save this file. This information will be helpful for managing your data, especially when you upgrade the software. Next, let's work on drafting the drawing views for this assembly. In this next step, we shall place the views in the drawing sheet along with the exploded view, bomb table and balloons. So, I will go to the start menu bar and select drafting under mechanical design. In the new drawing creation window, I will select the front, top and left sheet type. This is called first angle projection. Once I click on the OK button, the drawing sheet opens up with three views. The drawing sheet seems to be too big for these views. Let's change the sheet properties by right clicking on the sheet 1 in the specification tree and then selecting the properties. Here, under format, I will change the sheet to A1 ISO. I can click on the OK button to exit this window. Next, I will select the isometric view option from the views toolbar and switch to the assembly window. Once I click on any of the assembly surfaces, the view appears in the drawing sheet as seen. I shall click at the center of this blue orientation knob to confirm the orientation of the isometric view. Next, let's insert another isometric view. Then switch back to the assembly window. Here, I will expand the Applications branch in the Specification tree and then expand the scenes and then click on the Exploded View scene. Once I click on any of the surfaces of the assembly in the Graphics area, the Exploded View appears in the Drawing Sheet. I will now go to the Insert menu bar and click on Generation and then Bill of Material. A table listing all the parts and its quantities appears in the drawing sheet. You may double click on the table and then right click to select properties of the table. In the font tab, you may change the size of the text. I will change it to 10. Next, I will right click again and select Autofill to readjust the column sizes. Next, as we saw in our previous exercise, Let's go to Insert, then click on Generation and then Balloon Generation. Once I select a view, balloons are generated. The balloon numbers match exactly with the items in the bomb table. You may change the font size and the text for the view names in their properties window if required. The drawing for caster wheel assembly is completed.